Good to have every one of you with us today. Thank you for being here. I realize it's a holiday weekend. It's Labor Day. Hope all of y'all don't have to labor tomorrow. Praise the Lord. Celebrate Labor Day. Judy said, you working Monday? I said, Monday's a holiday. <laughs> what do you mean am I working Monday? It's a holiday. <laughs> that don't really mean nothing a lot of times. Thank you for being here today. I'm thinking about Wednesday night. I'm thinking about starting a Wednesday night. Something a little different. Uh, I've been praying about it. I've been thinking about it for several weeks now. I thought about it, and I thought I'll start it, and then I got a letter from the overseer. <laughs> and I thought, well, maybe I ought to listen. It didn't go away. I kind of postponed it. I'm thinking about a Wednesday night service. I'm thinking about a prayer slash Bible study on Wednesday night. Uh... In the fellowship hall. If you've got some doctrine that you'd like to discuss and have a form type Bible study where you can talk back. You know, I went to night study and usually when I get started talking, I get to going and don't stop and let nobody talk. <laughs> Maybe we can have a bell or something you can ring. Slow me down. But, but I'm thinking about having uh, kind of an informal Wednesday night. Mainly prayer, but prayer and Bible study. Uh, also, well, I won't get into that. So if you're interested in that, let me know. Do what? No, I, I hadn't said it yet. If I don't say it, it don't count. <laughs> Got to say it before it counts. <laughs> and the Bible's turned to 1 Corinthians, the second chapter. And I want to get you back on track today. Uh, preaching really to me this morning. Preaching to me. So, if I say something that offends you, just say, he was talking about himself. But if I say something that you think to yourself, I needed that, yeah, that was for you. So, uh, share with you this morning, chapter 2 of First Corinthians, starting with verse 1. And I, brethren, came unto you not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling. My speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Hear what he said there. He said, when I come to you, I didn't come with excellency of speech or of wisdom declaring to you the testimony of God. I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Let's try it over there one time see what happens. Father, we love you and we praise you and we thank you, God, for your blessings. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your spirit and your power and your glory, God, that touches, touched us, God. Help us, God, today to communicate your word, God. Help us, Father, today to manifest your power and your glory, God. Magnify yourself in this service this morning, God. We ask in Jesus' name, give you the praise, glory, and honor. Amen. You may be seated. If you're wondering what was going on, we're having a problem for the last few weeks on this. That. Y'all hear that? Did anybody hear that side of me? I am still here, aren't I? I didn't get raptured out or nothing? Okay. Don't ever know. Having a problem with that. We don't know what that is. 
We're working on it, but maybe we'll get it out. I want to talk to you this morning about things that concern me. Talk about probably more preachers this morning than members. I guess maybe I'm guilty of this more than most other folks. We just tell you that at times life gets complex and stressful. Just certain times life gets hard, difficult, hard to understand. Then you throw COVID into the mix of that and complex and stressful seems like an inadequate word to describe where we're at in our lives. When we throw COVID into the mix of, of all the things of life, it just kind of makes things worse. I want to share with you this morning what I believe that the Lord spoke to my life about this past week. Business circles, a lot of management classes and in management classes when things go difficult, they start telling you to get back to the basics. Get back to the things that work for you. If you're running a business and your real business is in on hard times and you're wondering whether you're going to survive or not, the thing they tell you to do is get back to the basics. The thing that got you here can get you on. We have a tendency to attract excess baggage. We have a tendency to allow things to grow on our lives and cause us to get bogged down a little bit. When we have stressful times and complex lifestyles or lives, uh, we need to look back at the basic thing that got us to where we're at. Talking this morning to the church, we live in a world where the smart people say that we're postmodern. We're modern. I guess that means after modern. Well, I believe postmodern would seem to mean the main thing that sticks out or stands out in our world today is dual. It's first off is pluralism and relativism. Pluralism means there's more than one way to God. Started out meaning there was more than one God. Then they couldn't explain what was going on, so then they started saying, well, we're going to the same God anyway. You, you've heard that on television. Popular television hosts have said there's a God's like a wheel with many spokes going to the same hub. That's a bunch of junk. A bunch of junk. But that's what our world is wrapped up in. The nation we're living in today believes the majority in pluralism that it does as you live the way you feel like you ought to live, everything's going to be all right. Takes the Bible and makes it ineffective. That is a, a statement against the word of God written in the Bible because my Bible says there's one way and his name is the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. If you believe that there's more than one way to God, then you're denying the God or the Christ of the Word of God, the Bible. So I don't believe in pluralism. And then we live in a world where it's, it's wrapped up with relativism. Everything is relative to my situation. Everything's a shade of gray. And according to the way I look at it, the shade of gray changes from one to the other. Everything is just a shade of gray, and, and, and there's really no right or wrong. It's according to how it looks. Well, I can tell a lie if I want to if it gets me out of a speeding ticket. Amen, Brother Harry Pritchett. I'm glad you felt like that. I can do whatever I want to do. I can live any way I want to do as long as that's the way I want to live. Uh, 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 relativism. Everything is right in my own sight. In that environmental and also with the pandemic we're going through, sometime us in the church lose sight of what really the, our salvation is all about. Sometimes we lose sight of the things that we need to see in our lives and be the people we need to be in our lives. Can I tell you today, uh, we need to get back to the basics. We need to do what the business world teaches their people to do and get back to the basics in the church world. Have you got back?
baggage in your life? Have you allowed things to accumulate up? Are you getting in complex situations to where you don't know what to do? I'll tell you what to do. Get back to the basics. And the basics is, His name is Jesus Christ. J-E-S-U-S. That's the basics. That's where we come from. That's where we're going to. Listen, we have a tendency to try to complicate things. It's just human nature in us to complicate things. Pastors and preachers want to have new messages. Something nobody ever heard. I prayed about that for years and years and years. One day the Holy Ghost spoke and he said it's been 2,000 years since Christ rose from the dead and ascended into heaven and there's been millions and millions and millions of preachers that preach. Who do you think you are? I think you're going to preach something nobody else preached. Just go ahead and take what I give you and go with it. We want to preach something new. We want to preach something that, that's groundbreaking that people will leave the church thinking to themselves, why? 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 Couldn't I ever thought of that? Why? Why? Couldn't I have known that? Why? That's just plain this plan today. Why didn't I know that already? We want to preach things on, on that in order. We, we want to keep things straight. Here's what we want to do, especially as pastors, a long-term pastors at that. We want to stay fresh and relevant, stay interested in what we're saying, and we want to be relative to their, uh, be relevant to their lives and preach to them things that will help them and head minister to them. And I problem is, sometimes we get so deep and so complicated and it just kind of convolutes the whole thing and we fail at the very mission that a pastor has and that's to connect the people to the hand of God. We just get too, too deep. And I understand Christians need teaching and teaching sometimes gets deep. Can I tell you today, we need to get back to the basics in our world, in our church world. We need to get back to Jesus. We need to get back to where we can just say, I come to know nothing when you accept Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I just come to talk about Jesus. I just come to relate to Lord Jesus Christ. That's what I came this morning to do. I come to tell you about Jesus. Second Corinthians, the, the, the 11th chapter, second, third verse, Paul told the church at Corinth, he said, I'm jealous over you with a godly jealous, for I have espoused you to one husband that I might present you a chaste virgin to Christ. That, but I fear lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through subtility, your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity of the gospel. He said, I'm worried about you. He said, I understand that Satan, the enemy, came in to Eve and through subtility or trickery or, or deceitfulness or, or trying to get their mind on other things. He said, she was tricked into that. I'm afraid your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity of Christ. Sometimes we get so many things going on and we get so complicated in our Christian life until we miss the very simplicity of Christ. Jesus Christ, He loves us. He died for us. He paid for our sin. And if we'll ask Him, He'll save our soul and deliver us from the power of darkness in this world. Jesus is a simple gospel. Anybody can accept Jesus as their Savior. It's not complicated. It's the simplest thing anybody can do. A little child can ask Jesus to come into their heart and save their soul, and He will. And we, as adults, sometimes get it so hard and complicated until we miss the whole point, and we're not able to engage people to the mighty hand of God and their lives be ministered to because we so care about the deep things. Life's complicated. We need something in our life that's not complicated. It's for Jesus Christ. And Paul's fear for the Corinthians was that they should be led astray from their sincere faith and pure devotion to Christ. Pray that's going to be led away. What does it mean, the simplicity of Christ? Simplicity of Christ is to suffer to place Jesus at center of all we are, of all we say, of all we do, and of all we think. Simplicity of Christ. It's just making Christ the center of who we are. We 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 sidetrack that. We've made our own desires the center of who we are. But if we're going to be Christians, then we've got to make Jesus the center of who we are. What our words say has got to be about the Lord Jesus Christ and Him being the center of who we are. We, we need to get 
a place where Jesus is the reason for everything we do. And in Him, we have our being. Paul said in the Colossians 1 and 18, for He, talking about Jesus, is the head of the body, the church. The church is the body, and Jesus is the head. Who, talking about Jesus, is the beginning and the firstborn from the dead, that in all things He might have preeminence. Preeminence. Preeminence means that He might have the eminence of everything, that our lives ought to be according to Him. And preeminence means He's my everything. I, I, everything I need, I have it in Him. Preeminence. Somebody say that word preeminence. Say it out loud. Preeminence. Say it again. Preeminence. Uh, Paul said that Christ ought to have preeminence. Uh, one translation said that Jesus ought to be all things. He might have supremacy, or in all things, He might have supremacy in our life. Can I tell you today? Jesus wants to be your everything. He wants to be your all in all. He, he wants to be everything that you have in your life. Preeminent. The question I have to ask myself is do I make Jesus preeminent? Is He the central figure of my life? Is He the supreme being of my life? Is Jesus preeminent? <laughs> a lot of times our inability to keep Jesus in the center of our life is the reason for a lot of our problems. I can't tell you the number of problems I've had. And when I got it all boiled down to the fact, it was down to the fact that Jesus just wasn't the center of everything in my life. Those little things creep in. The first thing you know, those little things start causing problems and situations. And I end up getting in a situation. I can't tell you the number of people I've counseled in church who allow little things to come in. And those little things built to big things. You know what happened? They stopped letting Jesus be the preeminent one in their life. Jesus stopped being all in all. They started needing something else other than the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I tell you today, church, all I need is Jesus. I'm telling you this morning. All I need is Jesus. All we need as a church is Jesus. Jesus can be our everything. And if we'll make Jesus our everything, He'll be our everything. And we don't need anything else. Jesus is His name. And Jesus, praise God, is the reason for everything I do in my life. I about 15 years ago, went to camp meeting and they come out with a new slogan. I don't know enough. They've been saying it for about 15 or 20 years. I bet they said it 15, 20 times during them four or five days of camp meeting. And every speaker that got up or just about repeated it. Keep the main thing, the main thing. And let's say what the church needs to do is keep the main thing, the main thing. And what we need to do in camp, the main thing, the main thing. And I tell you today, that's kind of a catchy phrase, but a whole lot of truth in that. What we need to do is keep the main thing, the main thing. What is the main thing, Pastor? His name's Jesus. He's the main thing. Hey, Jesus is the reason. Jesus is why I'm saved. Jesus is why I'm delivered. I come to church today to give praise, glory, and honor to the Lord Jesus Christ. You might have came to be seen, but I didn't come to be seen. You might have come to do this or that. I come to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I tell you today? We need to keep the main thing, the main thing. This time that we're going through. And Jesus. Jesus is the main thing in our lives. Because you never say Jesus is the main thing. I asked myself a few questions. I want to ask you about these questions. The question is, have I made Jesus the preeminent one in my life? The Bible said in Christ said he ought to be preeminent in your life. If you're going to be yourself his, then he ought to be preeminent in your life. Is he preeminent in my choice of friends? You know, sometimes you have friends that pull you down. Sometimes you have friends that cause you to want, they try to get you to stop doing what you know you're supposed to do for the glory of God. Is Jesus preeminent in your friend? Is Jesus preeminent in your family? Does it revolve around the, the, the Lord Jesus Christ, or does it rather revolve around something else in your life? Does, is, does your leisure time, and does Jesus... Jesus preeminent in your leisure time. Uh, when you're on leisure, I heard a man talk one time. He said, Preacher, I pray with you today. He said, But my wife's been going to church all her life. He said, And every time she gets on vacation, she wants to drink wine. And every time I take a drink, I thought, Jesus wasn't the 
preeminent one in her leisure time. In her leisure time, she got out of town, got away from people that know her. She thought, well, I can just drink me some wine. He said, she'll get all tipsy. He said, I'll get drunk as a skunk. He said, I'll come home and go to the boot leg joint first thing. He said, I done tried that boot. We ought to make Jesus the preeminent one in everything in our life. Has Jesus, Jesus the preeminent one in my leisure time? Is it the preeminent one in my career choices? Do I need to change courses in my career so that Jesus can be the Lord of my life? Is Jesus the preeminent one in my church responsibility? Woo, help me, Lord. Uh, is Jesus preeminent in my church responsibility? Or do I treat church like something that a spare tire in the back of the car? I go when I want to go and when I feel like going and other times I, I just got other things to do. We, we need to put Jesus as the preeminent one in our life. And the last one I wrote down was, is Jesus preeminent in my spiritual giftedness and my desire for spiritual giftedness and the ministry God has given me? Am I doing this for my accolades my, my, my being adored, or am I doing it for the glory of Jesus Christ? Because it's the calling. I'm telling you that church, we can get back to the basics, and when we get back to the basics, life will work out much better. Somebody say, make it preeminent. Make it preeminent. If we're going to be here, we're going to have to make him preeminent. Romans 1 16, Paul said, But I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. What's the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believeth? To the Jew first and also to the Greek. I'm not ashamed of the path, the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God unto everyone that believeth. To the Jew first, also to the Greek. The simple truth is Jesus is the power of God. Jesus Christ is the power of God. When we access that, the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in Him and what He taught, what He commanded us, we have access to the power of God working in our lives. I notice there's three things that we need to change our understanding about. Let me just share those three and then we're going to go home. First off, people don't need complicated, eloquent, teaching and preaching to get saved. We thank them. i got to cover all, cross all the T's and dot all the I's. And I'm telling you, that's not what gets people saved. The simple gospel presentation is what gets people saved. What are you talking about, Pastor? God loves us. Jesus died for our sin. Jesus was raised from the dead. He wants to forgive us of our sins. If we'll ask Him, He will. That's pretty much the simple gospel, but put in a nutshell. We get to thinking to ourselves that we, well, well I've got to share this, and I, I've got to do that, and I, I, I've got to teach this, and I've got to do that. Sometimes we make it so complicated till it comes convoluted in the sinner's mind. All the sinner needs to know is, praise God that God loves you. Jesus died for your sin, and if you'll ask Him, God will forgive you and give you eternal life. I'm telling you today, church, that's what we need in our church world today. He said in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 and 2, I declare to you the gospel which I preach also, I preach unto you, which also you have received wherein you stand, which also you are saved. He said, I come owing nothing but Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I come preaching to you the, gospel, the best gospel presentation I've ever heard, the best one I've ever used is simply God loves you, Jesus died for you, Jesus will forgive your sin and come and live in your heart if you will repent and then you'll have everlasting life. Simple, isn't it? Have you heard Franklin Graham do that minute? TSA is on television. He comes on and he said, Look, it's complicated during this time, isn't it? But you know, God loves you and wants to help you. And he will if you'll just receive him. He said, All you got to do is pray that Jesus is God's son. Just pray like this God, I believe Jesus is your son and you raised him from the dead. And if I'll ask him, he'll forgive my sin. He said, And then you just tell God that. And when you pray that prayer, call this number on the bottom of the screen. Somebody come pray with you. Less than a minute. I, I, I find myself wondering every time he does that, I wonder how many people's calling him. I bet there's a lot of people calling him. 
You know why? It's the simplicity of the gospel. We've got things too complicated. We have to have the Bible in three translations to get somebody saved. I'm telling you, the only way you need to, uh, what we need to do to get people saved, simply let them know God loves them. Jesus died for them. Praise God. And if we'll ask Him, God to forgive us, for our sins through the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but salvation is the greatest thing that ever happened in my life. And it was so simple, even a redneck country boy from Norwood could find out about it. Woo! And I prayed and God come in. I had wondered in my mind, and I thought all kinds of things. But, uh, but you just simply said, I believe God wants to save you tonight. Why don't you ask Him? I thought, I believe I will. Truly ask Him, I ask Him. God saved us that night. I'm telling you tonight, we need to get away from some of this complicated stuff, especially when we're talking to people that need to be saved. Here's the way it works. When you commit sin, you owe a debt that you can only pay by dying. And if you die with that debt, you die for sin. So you'll be judged as a sinner. You owe the debt. You, when you commit sin, you owe the debt you could not pay. Jesus came along, paid your debt that he didn't know. And now, if you'll believe on him and ask God, to forgive your sin and pay your debt, and you can be free from sin. Woo! I'm telling you. Praise God. It's the simplicity of the God. So, let me just ask you the question. Are you saved this morning? If you're not saved this morning, you need to give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. How do I do that, Pastor? You just simply say, God, I'm sorry. I believe Jesus is your son. I believe you rose from the dead. And I'm asking you to forgive my sin for his sake. <laughs> and if you pray that prayer, call the number on the bottom of your screen. We'll pray for you. Up here in the altar, we'll pray for you. We're looking by video. Call East Aramont Church. Leave a message on that, on the book page, and we'll get back to you. So first off, we don't need complicated messages for people to get saved. Second off, this when God about this, we don't need a, a great complicated messages for people to get healed. <laughs> Let me just help you here for a moment. Acts 9, 32. And it came to pass as Peter passed through all corners. He came to the saints which dwell at Lydia, under, which had kept his bed eight years, was sick of palsy. And Peter said unto him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ maketh thee whole. Rise, make thy bed. And he rose immediately. Listen to what Peter said. The message to Aeneas was, Christ makes you whole. That's the only message he got. That's the only message he preached to him. Jesus Christ makes you whole. He didn't tell him about the stripes on his back. He didn't tell him about the bruise, the skin, the bruise that he had. He didn't tell him about his stripes. By his stripes we're healed. He didn't tell him that atonement God has provided. He, he didn't tell him none of that. He just made us said, Jesus Christ makes you whole. And praise God, he told him, get up from where you're at. And rose up immediately. I'm telling you, sometimes we might complicate divine healing when we ought to just be proclaiming what the Word of God said. The Word of God said that there's healing provided for us. And if you're sick this morning, just believe God will heal you and expect God to work His miracle in your life. Woo! Glory. Glory. I'm afraid we... We, we want to be so sterile. We want to answer all the questions. People don't need questions answered. They need faith in the, the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. Old Calvary simply declaring, Jesus wants to heal you. Get up from your sickness and be whole in the name of Jesus. Maybe the best gospel message you'll ever preach on healing. I ask myself the question, what is yeah. What is Christ? Maybe it's just the time. What the book said, expect a miracle to come. We've had a lot of healings in this church. A lot of people have been healed in these altars. I asked a man one time, a man asked me one time, so terrible had been done. I forgot what it was now. I might have been put to heal teeth of that terrible affliction he had. I forgot what it was. He said, how do you know when God's going to heal somebody? I said, I don't know. He said, so what do you do? I said, I just pray like he's going to. I believe he's going to. He said, everybody you pray for get healed. No, everybody I don't pray for gets healed. 
I said, but enough people get healed and I keep praying. <laughs> I just keep saying it. What the book says, he's saying it. Jesus wants to heal you. Rise up, take up your bed and walk. And enough people start rising up, taking up the bed and walk. Praise God and God's power reaches down. What is Christ centered? Just maybe it's declaring the power of God and expecting a miracle to take place right then. So I'm saying to you this morning, if you're sick, rise up and be healed. Jesus wants to heal you. Believe Him and start acting, participating in the healing power of God. So you don't need a great message for people to be saved. You don't need a great message for people to be healed. And thirdly, you don't need a great complicated message for folks to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. I thought it because I wanted to. I thought it was good. They said for Peter. <coughs> Excuse me. Said, we need you to come down here and talk to us about salvation y'all got going on. Peter went down to Cornelius' house. Cornelius was a Gentile. All of his family was Gentiles, but Jews. Peter went down there to preach for him. Acts 10, 44. Listen. While Peter yet spake these words, preaching to him about Jesus. While Peter yet spake these words, Holy Ghost fell on all of them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Peter was preaching about Jesus. He wasn't even preaching about the Holy Ghost. Don't you think about that a minute? He didn't even talk to them and teach them about speaking in tongues. He didn't tell them you've got to tarry before God will fill you with the Holy Ghost. Why? He didn't even holler at them. Hold on. Praise him louder. He didn't even stand behind him and push him in the back where the head was doing that number. While they're seeking in the altar. He just simply told them about Jesus. And when he preached to them about Jesus, the power of God came down and filled the whole house where they were sitting. I thought about it. I wasn't even instructed on how to receive the Holy Ghost. They was Gentiles. They wasn't in the upper room. They probably hadn't heard the upper room. Here they were. Peter didn't tell them that. He just preached Jesus to them. And the power of God came down. I thought to myself, why can't we just proclaim that Jesus loves you and will save you? And you give your heart to God. He'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost and just expect people to get filled. Woo! Glory. I'm expecting folks to get filled. If you're listening over this video and you're saved, God will give you the Holy Ghost. All you got to do is ask Him, believe Him, and respond to what He does. Praise God. His listeners was baptized in the Holy Ghost and they spake with other tongues because those other Jews that came to Peter said, we never saw it just like this. Why can't we just do the same thing in our lives? You know what we need in our church world today during this COVID pandemic? We need Jesus. We need more about Jesus. One of the state officials stood up at camp meeting one day. It was a night in the new churches. He said, here's what we need in our new churches. We need our pastors to go in the new churches and preach Jesus. He said, for the first year, a new church ought to be able to preach nothing but Jesus. Every service. Can I tell you, Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer. I put all my faith and all my confidence in him. 2 Corinthians 1 and 20 said it like this, For all the promises of God in Him, talking about Jesus, are yea and in Him, amen, to the glory of God. All the promises of God are received through the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus is the guarantee that God will do what He said He would do. The great simplicity of Jesus is He paid the price of Cal on Calvary for us. We can be free from the bondage of sin. So what do you need this morning? Do you need forgiveness? Well, the Bible said if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That covered the sin part of it. You say, but Pastor, I've got other things. I need healing. Peter just simply said in Acts 9, 34 to Aeneas, Jesus Christ, make it be whole. Rise up and walk. I'm telling you, if you're sick, just believe Jesus is a healer. Start receiving your, your, your healing. You need deliverance from some bondage. Jesus said in John 8, 36, If the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. You just need victory over the devil. My Bible said in the book of James, the fourth chapter, seventh verse, Submit yourself therefore to 
resist the devil and he shall flee from you. Everything God has is through Lord Jesus Christ. All we need is Jesus. Let's say that one more time. All we need is Jesus. Um, yesterday morning sometime, all we need is Jesus. And I thought about that song. Uh, all we need is love. Love. Love is all we need. And I thought, I just sing it. All we need is Jesus. Jesus. Jesus is all we need. All you need is Jesus. Take care of a situation you have in your life. You take care of a circumstance you have. What do you need from God this morning? Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer for everything. Everything we'll ever need can be answered in the Lord Jesus Christ. Would you stand with me? Let's pray together. If you have sin in your life this morning, why don't you just confess them and believe God to forgive you? If you need healing, why don't you just believe God? Jesus is the healer and accept healing in your life. You say, Pastor, what if I don't feel like I'm healed right now? Keep on believing God's doing it. Somebody said, well, I don't want to um, say something that ain't true. Well, just say God's healing me right now. Even though I might be sick, He's healing me right now. I'm making it right now. Praise God, and right now, come sooner or later, He'll heal you. I believe God heals every one of our diseases. If you've got problems this morning, you bondage, you bondage, Jesus can deliver you. The power of the Lord Jesus Christ can raise you up, set you free. I want to pray this morning. Would you pray when I pray? Would you ask God to do for you what He's done? And would you ask it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? Pray with me today. Father, I come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus. I pray, God, for the souls in this sanctuary and those listening, God, over the over the computer to wherever this message might go, God, I'm praying for those lives, Father. I'm praying your power and your glory will reach down where they're at, God. Help them to understand, God, it's about Jesus. Not about what this or that and all the churches and all the things going on in the church world. It's just simply about believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, accepting Him as Lord and Savior of our lives, and our sins will be forgiven, God. You're the healer. You're the divine provider. God, you'll do for us what we can't do for ourselves. Help us to know and understand, God, that the simplicity of salvation is Jesus Christ, is Lord of my life, Father. God, I ask you to do this and touch every life listening in Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody say Jesus. Say it again.